Welcome to Yosemite, exploding in popularity with movies like Don Wall and Free Solo. We're excited to take you around for the two days that we have here. Tim and Finn, full-time digital nomads, and this month we're on a California road trip in this rental camper van. Subscribe to join the journey and just sit back as we explore Yosemite together. Hey, Thank wasn't you. sure. No, you're fine. Do we get a little brochure with our yeah, entry? Yeah. All right, yeah. sweet. Thank All right, you. sick. Thank you. Okay. Allison, nice, nice work. Oh my gosh, we're in. Wait, was this recording? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. All this time, it was never enough. So please slow down. Checking in to Yosemite during COVID-19, uh, after we booked our flight to come out to California, essentially to come to Yosemite, realized that they are doing permits only. You can't just come and show up. There was um, every 15th of the month you can submit to try to get a pass just to come in for just to drive through here for the day. That was way sold out by the time that I had realized this was even going on. So the workaround is that we are paying for two cabins in the park because if you have accommodation within the park, obviously all the campgrounds were filled up, then you can come in. The dilemma <laughs> is that the cabins are not pet friendly. So we booked like $130, however much they are, cabins that were what? not even that we're not even gonna sleep in because Pepper can't go inside. So we're just gonna sleep in the van with Pepper in the parking lot of these cabins, but we're in. Okay, honey, we're in. You come up here, come up here. We got you in, good job. Good girl. She uh, has lots of stuff to do. She just can't sleep in the cabin. So we're not sneaking her into the park. Yosemite is actually a very dog friendly national park and we're so excited. She's even more so that she can go on a lot of the hikes. There are six different areas. We came in down here. We're going to take this one-way Glacier Point Road tonight, check out those views before we then head into the valley for tomorrow. And then since we're uh, going to Mammoth Lakes from here on our way out, the final day we'll leave through this area on the east side. Today, on day one, we're going to spend our time going through Glacier Point Road. We need more than hopes and wishes for us to make it through the night. Notice you can't see much? On top of COVID-19, we're also dealing with wildfires around California. So they're not close to Yosemite, but all the smoke is over here. So it's impacting visibility a little bit. You may think that, hey, maybe we don't know how to use the white balance like normal on the camera, but I promise, wildfires. So we're just getting here and we're just concerned that maybe we're not even going to see anything the whole time. I don't know. I put my Instagram outfit on <laughs> since the last 30 seconds and it is not ideal but 
Oh, that's Half Dome. What do you mean, is it? <gasps> Whoa, I can't believe I got my reaction on camera. It's hidden behind this rock. That was a genuine reaction. You were focused on your hat and you're like, oh, it's pretty. Do you want to come up? To oh my rock? God, I can't believe it's all smoky. <sighs> Obviously, we are concerned about all of the people that this is actually affecting, like people losing their homes, people being evacuated. But nothing is assumed on YouTube. You always have to uh, say those things. So, no, we don't have the worst of it here because our trip to Yosemite is being ruined. Ruined. But, you know, just gotta say these things. Okay. Um, so then, what, like this is, Bride of, I think that's Bridalville Falls. You can hear it when it's quiet. And then it's coming from, oh my god. Oh my god! Yeah, it, visibility could be worse o out here. This isn't that bad. Yeah, I mean it's bad, but um, maybe we can boost the contrast. Try. <laughs> with the smoke. Washburn Point was so incredible that we actually ended up spending an hour just right here looking at the view. So didn't exactly anticipate that, but if we want to make the Centennial Viewpoint hike before sunset, we gotta keep going. for at the other scenic overlook. Looks like young Allison Deemer is also an expert on Yosemite. I think that's like the most photographed like spot on earth or something. Really? Something like that. It's the apple background too. Okay, stay. Stay. <laughs> Honey, did you go for a walk? Here, get it. I need this shot. Did you go for a walk today? Glacier Point, if you walk the short hike to the very end, you have kind of a 360 degree panorama of everything. And for the first time, we're seeing Yosemite Valley, which is where we're sleeping tonight. And it's directly below us. And Tim's on his phone. Do you have service here or something? I'm doing customer service right now for Trip Travel Gear. Okay, it just, it doesn't stop. <laughs> oh, there's service. Crystal only got five out of six pieces on her pack and keep set. So guess what? I'm gonna make it right, right now. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Dude, that's just part of it. You gotta do it. If you're new to the channel, this is our travel gear brand that we sell on Amazon. And you can check out this backpack and our packing cubes in the link below. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Glacier Point, 10 out of 10. The silver lining is that these masks are great smoke protectors. <laughs> well, COVID definitely has its perks because this parking lot is a lot bigger than we initially noticed. And I can't even imagine how crowded that would be at a regular time. I think Yosemite is at about 20% capacity and we're so lucky to be here right now. That felt like plenty of people out there. That was a lot of people still. And there's no tour buses. 
Centennial Dome Trail is 2.2 miles yeah. down there. And we're not doing this hike because dogs aren't allowed. I thought dogs were allowed on all the hikes here. I only know what I know. That song's pretty faded, or that sign is. Are dogs allowed now? <laughs> I'm sure it's a nice hike. Yep. If well, you're not encumbered by a 10.2 pounds of love, <laughs> you can enjoy that hike. Since we're sleeping in the valley anyways, we want to go check that out before it gets too dark and you know mm -hmm. we're driving in the dark on these roads. The brochure said that this was great to do at sunset and since we're not really getting a sunset, we might as well go check out the valley. Wow, so that was 3,200 feet down to the yeah, valley. That's insane. That's far. Really far. I'm impressed. I don't know if that's it. I need signs. I'm not very good at when there's not signs. That might be it. I mean, it's... Well, Tim... It, is it? What are you talking about? I don't know if it looks like the picture. It's just this massive. Like... I'm trying to look for bears. Okay, just stay bear aware. Be it's... good. Stay. said it was clear this morning. It just blew in. Well, maybe the winds will change. Maybe the winds will change. You know that. There's got to be a song optimism. about that, right? <laughs> what, about fire? Fire, wildfire smoke? No, maybe the winds will change. Changing winds, like changing love. Changes by Tupac? You can get a song out of it. Okay. <sighs> so we have a tent. We have a tent and at least we're near the parking lot because you actually like walk to your tent. To be bear aware, we cannot keep any food in the car. But I didn't even say like we have a camper van. So like our entire pantry, we have to put in a bear storage box, I think. Do you know why? They say a fed bear is a dead bear. Oh. Have you heard that? Well, I've heard bearware. I thought that's what you were going to say. <laughs> End scene. <laughs> The original plan that we talked about, we had to get a tent here so that we could get into the park because we had not entered the lottery system. Long story short, we have accommodations of both the van and a tent. Vinny has elected to sleep in the van with Pepper. I get Princess sleeping in the tent, so I'm going to go show you what that looks like. So if we mentioned earlier that the tents are $160, that's a little bit of a fib. They're $120 and then you pay $37 in different fees and taxes. It's kind of like a Ticketmaster thing, so you end up at about $160.
There, that's home sweet home. Get out your bear box so you stay bear aware. And for $160 a night, you get this light. So that's sweet. There's no electric in here, which is fine. I get it. Everybody be plugging in everything. You get some literature to read about deer mice and the hauntifiers, and also about being bearware, which we love a good bearware sign. These sweet windows, which I'm sure have confused very many people, but really, all window sheds should be like that. Pull up, pull down. And then finally, the ultimate bear safe technology. And if that all wasn't enough, a very, very comfy bed with army blankets. Finn might have the better deal sleeping in the van. Surface is almost complete. Oh my god! Oh my goodness, a dirty dog on a white sheet. Oh, Timmy, that was so nice. Thank you. I went on a photo safari and came back to a clean kitchen and a bed. It's so nice. He's so mean to her. Oh, it's thank so you. terrible to be her. You're so nice. Yeah, that's nice. Pepper, you licked the lens. <laughs> I've said it many times, I know. I would change my ways, I know for sure. When all the crows decide to leave They settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a little while So nights in the park that leaves us one full day and we're spending all of it right here in Yosemite Valley. We had a complete misunderstanding of the dog situation in Yosemite. We thought she could go on just like every trail with us here. It's the same deal as every other national park in the U.S. where dogs are allowed, can't take them on trails. She can go in paved areas though which paved is nice. Trails. And there's plenty of things to walk around and just do these like easy little trails up to points of interest. Like right here, the upper and lower falls. Which may not be falling. It's looking awfully dry up there. <laughs> looking a little dry. The waterfall may be dry, but at least it's smoky. Well, you'll notice in these interesting rock formations that at one point there was water falling through them. Days ago, use your millions hand, of years use ago. Use your hand to do a special effect of where the water... Okay. Can you fix this in post? Perfect. It's so amazing. <laughs> Where 
worth the drive. <laughs> <laughs> Then you'll notice that the Upper to Lower Falls Trail follows the river in between the two. Um, it's a very nice scenic hike along this river and paved the whole way, so we got pepper. During these unprecedented times, I was wondering how it was gonna go with like hiking and trails and everything. And uh, just people mask up when you walk by if there's not six feet, and if there's six feet, you go very single file on the edge of the path. You better get it. Well, you may know that Finn is an albatross expert. Her goal is to become an expert at all birds across the bird kingdom. I'm bird lawyer. Yeah. Alright, you're gonna ruin it. That is a blue oh. warbler. Or a blue chested woodpecker. So cool. What was that bird? This one's duck. This is a female mallard. Yeah. Oh, what was the blue bird? Can we say hi to your dog? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, this is Pepper. Oh, Pepper. Oh, hey, Pepper. Oh, Hello. so friendly. Yeah, she's Hello. fast with the basos. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Do you know what the blue ones are called? Yeah, they're Stellar's Jay. Stellar's Jay. Okay, wow. Is that its nest under the tree on the... Oh, I'm not sure. And if you want to see um, an acorn woodpecker, you can see them up. That's an acorn woodpecker. Oh, wow. Oh, there's some more stuff. Acorn woodpecker. Some woodpecker. You were the right person to run into. Yeah. <laughs> We've been trying to ID some birds here. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Have a good one, guys. Another uh, photographer's tip to keep my sunshade as a bracelet. <laughs> that tip only works if you have the most petite Lala wrist yes. ever. Very tall, very small hands. It's very strange. Although it is August and we're on one of the most popular trails in all of Yosemite. Do you know how quiet it is? There's been bouts of people and their kids and families and bikes and dogs and, but look at, we're right by the big rock on the falls trail hike. I doubt this happens a lot. I know why it's so quiet all of a sudden. Tim, can you guess what time is it? Oh, it's lunch time. <laughs> I bet it is 12.05, 12 wait, 10. Wait, we can play this. I bet it's That's 11, why it's, it's 12.13. <laughs> we are just along Northside Drive, right in Yosemite Loop. We're gonna have lunch in this parking spot and just across the street is a river with a bunch of people enjoying the water. So that's after lunch. Life is good. I think the surprise is gonna be when the water's freezing cold. Okay, for the win, at the last second before this trip, we ordered an inflatable stand-up paddleboard to our house in Florida. It came in a case, and we flew with it as checked luggage all the way to California. If you can believe it, it's only 20 pounds, and you're currently watching our first time using it. We don't know anything about this brand or anything. It just ended up being one of the best things we had on this trip. Oh God. There we go. It's not inflated all the way. I thought you were just gonna sit. Huh? It's it's too tippy, not inflated. No, no, I got this. We're going in for sure. Pepper, would you sit down? Oh dear. This is. 
We got it. We're doing it. This is it. No, you're gonna hit your head on the log. I'm not gonna hit my head on a log. <laughs> this is totally it. I'm gonna lose my rebo. Do they touch? This is it. That's the deep spot right there. This is it. I don't believe you. Thanks. First voyage. <laughs> I thought this would be faster. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. Maybe it feels ridiculous. Oh, does it not? It feels... No, it feels like it's working really good. <laughs> this is... This is a little bit better. Uh-oh, it's too shallow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? Yeah, it's deeper. Look, look, we're going deeper. Wow, we're going so fast all of a sudden. I know, I'm getting the hang of this. How did this happen? Turbo mode. Woo! Pepper! <laughs> no! <laughs> hey, come here. Good girl. Hey, girl. Come on, Hey, girl. Here. Smart. Hey, girl. One, two, three. Yay. Good dog. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Refreshing. <laughs> the first casualty. First day, we have to portage. That's when you lift your vessel to go into another input, but okay, that's it. I didn't lift it all. <laughs> In my arms, you see. We didn't really realize it, but we've kind of left the swimming area and... Fair wind at all times. We went farther with me. Is that no cap? I'm not sure if that's it. Wait, is it? It's, it's, just, it's just a rock. Like, you can call it whatever you want. Other people can call it whatever they want. Is that actually it though? This is the best spot to look at it from then. <laughs> Let's just stay here and look at it. Because we were in the field earlier and it was just a bunch of bugs. In the true spirit of the National Park Service. <laughs> Cut I, down this tree. Everyone knows I'm kidding. Well, everyone who watches us knows I'm kidding. And then everyone who this is their first video can just hate me in the comments. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Come. Good girl. Good dog. Hi, swimming. Good dog. She wanted that stick. Oh, Come she on. wants a stick. I'll get you a stick. Come on. Do you want to go to shore? Maybe she needs to go potty. Pepper, you wanna go see her? Good girl, you went potty? Good job. Yeah. Come on out here. Come on. Good girl. Yes. Is it cold? <laughs> yeah, you're cold. Okay, what can I get to you?
secret that getting to national parks earlier rather than later in the day is uh, just better for your experience. What we talked about in our last video at Sequoia National Park is similar to the experience here. What we've learned today in our Yosemite Valley loop is the fact that the nature of it being a loop, everyone who did not stay in the park is coming in through the park and following the same loop together. So they're all kind of hitting the same sites along the loop. Since we stayed in the park and since we're always just trying to <laughs> find the best way to do whatever. Um, we tried to start at the end of the loop, so that is the north side if you're looking on the map. Right behind me is Bridal Veil Falls, one of the most famous points to look at here in the park. It's also one of the first things that you drive by in the loop, so we saw so many cars here this morning. Here at 5 o'clock p.m., granted, these are unprecedented times and the park's at 20% capacity, but no one, is, no one is here and the lighting in the afternoon is beautiful because now the sun has shifted from behind the falls to shining at the falls. Oh, and bonus, <laughs> these falls actually have some water. It helps to get cozy out here. It helps with not feeling awkward about sleeping in a parking lot. You look like you should be sleeping in a parking lot. This is good. All right, I'm going to go take a shower. <laughs> well. We're so lucky we woke up, looked up, and it's clear. So we're bombing back over to Tunnel View, which we drove past but hardly showed you on our first day in here, and gonna go check out the sites to really see the park for the first time now that the smoke has cleared. Smoke has lifted. We can see all of the greens and everything, but now we just have the morning mist. So to get that glowing mountain rock, it's a sunset view, but the mist looks so neat. And just the fact that we can now see blue sky and green trees makes it also real. So glad we're at least getting a moment of normal. was not even close to enough time in Yosemite where I take you now in <laughs> is up here on highway 120 Tioga Road oh my gosh oh, look. <laughs> to the sea. this is a better view than tunnel view this is amazing <laughs> If this video at all was entertaining or helpful, if you give us a thumbs up down below, it tells YouTube that we're not complete idiots, even though we kind of are. Baby! Baby! Safety. Bear aware at all times. Baby! What if there was just a bear right there then? We turn our homes into ashes. We fled out the back door. We towards the city lights all oh, the city lights still not used to all this concrete abandoned cars in the outskirts where we sit and eat we sleep in the back seat oh. 
use this in the video, but just to put in context what's going on in the car, we're blasting the Pocahontas soundtrack. <laughs> almost 10,000 feet on Tioga Road. So, so happy it finally cleared up and we're getting our last view of Half Dome in the background. I think I feel the elevation already. This mountainous road is only open during the summer. It doesn't even open until June. that we learned these few days in Yosemite. So you might be wondering what time of year is best to come to Yosemite. And of course it would depend on what you're planning on doing. Here in August, uh, some things like some of the waterfalls were dried up. So I suppose that was kind of a bummer, but we have beautiful, beautiful, sunny and warm weather. Down in Yosemite Valley, it gets pretty hot. It can be in the 90s, so if you are going on long hikes, that is very warm. But up on Tioga Pass with high elevation, it's pretty wonderful to have the warmer weather because at the high elevation, it doesn't always typically get so warm up high. Tioga Pass is also only open between uh, May and November, so that might not be open if you come early in the spring or the late fall. I'm sure at no matter what time of year, it is insanely beautiful and fortunately we are literally about to leave this second. they're turning people away oh yeah people who think they can come thought in. that they could come in and didn't know what a bummer right yeah just if you didn't look online or something. Yeah. yeah right in curry village in yosemite valley there is food trucks and there are there's a store that's reasonably priced kind of like a little market and there's a restaurant to eat at all open during covid if you would like to see more Yosemite tips, including a packing guide for your trip, you can head over to our blog. There'll be a link in the bio, or you can just Google search Yosemite, Tim, and Finn. If you are deciding whether to bring your dog to Yosemite or not, um, you are very limited with your dog inside the park, which is not very different than other national parks. So just because we love hanging out with our dog and knew that we were gonna sacrifice hiking for having Pepper here, that was you know our decision. And if hiking the trails is very important to you, which it is a very big part of Yosemite because there's just very few roads to drive on the part of the beauty is just getting out into nature then you will be limited by having your dog so that is um, good information for you to know but for the three days that we had here there was plenty for us to do in that short amount of time with pepper oh we're out of the park now we're in the that. National Forest. There's more. You can catch us next week going over to Mammoth Lakes. So if you click the subscribe button and ring the bell, you will be notified next week when we're over in Mammoth.